Welcome back everyone to a series of videos that is uh, devoted to the tolerance stack of analysis that is available in this incredibly powerful tool that we call NX. It is a privilege to do these videos for you. My name is Steve Samuel of Design Visionaries and I have this little assembly that I've been working on that I'm going to show you how to uh, create the tolerance stack of analysis on. The very first step in the process was to make an arrangement and we did that in the last video and you can see that there's an arrangement there's a default arrangement that has everything that has everything put together like so oops there we go that's arrangement number one and there's an open arrangement just like this and the last video dealt with that the next thing we need to do is ensure that all of the little components that we have have the correct GD&T callouts and tolerances so that the uh, tolerance stack up analysis knows what to automatically vary. We're going to be doing a Monte Carlo analysis on these parts, which means we're going to, uh, through the 3DCS plugin, we're going to be making variations in this statistical way to find out what's the viability of the uh, of the tolerance stack or the tolerances and the way we've placed this and, and assembled it we're going to find out what its actual viability is through this plugin so I'm opening up the top case and in order to continue I've got to put the GD&T uh, on the top case and the GD&T is easy to place on the parts if you use PMI product manufacturing information in NX PMI has uh, become much easier to place than ever before and what I want to ask myself is if this were a real part and I was to inspect this part basically what would I do how would I put it on the surface plate what would be my datum plane A my datum plane B well in general when you place a part like this on to the uh, that big granite block that we call a surface plate you would probably just place it face down here and so that would establish plane A and therefore this face is probably the best bet for plane A so I'm going to go to datum feature symbol like this and I'm going to uh, ensure that my uh, uh, my datum identifier is set to A this is the first plane I'm going to be specifying I need to select the surface that I'm going to uh, uh, assume is plane A is uh, data A, and I'm going to pull away from that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I want to whoops. I want to select a plane that the that datum feature symbol will reside upon. So you do data datum feature symbol. Make sure it says A. Select the face that you want. Hover over it. Pull away zoom out a little bit select the plane that it'll reside upon and there you have a very nice location for datum plane a the way i'm looking at this part probably what's very uh, critical is uh, the uh, a datum that is in this hole right in this hole if i basically fixture this part through this hole I'm going to say datum B I'm going to put a datum B there and I'm going to select this plane right here for datum B which one is it right right there and I'm going to pull away oops let's just grab that let's grab that double click on it and I want to kind of position it a little better okay that's fine and so there's datum B and datum B is the inside surface of this boss and datum C will let's say uh, be this edge right here this this face because with datum A we've limited this part in this direction with datum B we've limited the movement the relative movement of this part this way and this way and so finally we're going to go to the datum feature symbol. Where is it? There it is. Make sure it says C. It's going to start at C. We're going to zoom in to the surface that we want. We're going to select it and pull away. Zoom out a little bit. 
select an appropriate plane for it to reside upon and click it like that. And there we have three datums, datum A, datum B, datum, datum C, and we've successfully limited this part in three dimensions.